Finding foreign brands in Iranian shopping malls is getting harder. U.S. sanctions have driven up their prices and many buyers are switching to domestic alternatives. The price of Iranian brands are much lower than foreign brands. Prices of foreign products fluctuate with dollars and there are also custom duties on them. That's helping some businesses increase their sales, but for many others, replacing international suppliers has been difficult and costly. We knew we would face problems, so we've changed from foreign supplies to local ones. We have worked very hard, and there are months where we didn't earn anything. We are still fighting. Since it scrapped the 2015 nuclear deal, Washington has restricted Tehran's access to U.S. dollars. Iranian oil, steel, gold and aluminum exports are also under sanctions. And dozens of foreign companies have left Iran. That's driven the local currency down by 60% against the dollar and prices are surging, making it hard for many people to afford even essential goods like food and medicines. Now US President Donald Trump's approved a new round of sanctions after Tehran shot down a US surveillance drone. But he's also said he's willing to talk with Tehran. The assets of Ayatollah Khomeini and his office will not be spared from the sanctions. These measures represent a strong and proportionate response to Iran's increasingly provocative actions. We will continue to increase pressure on Tehran. Tehran remains defiant, calling the sanctions economic terrorism, and says it won't renegotiate the 2015 nuclear deal. Is there any sanction left for America to impose that hasn't been imposed on us recently or in the last 40 years? And is there anything they've gained from this? As long as no tangible steps are taken and the legal rights of Iran in the framework of the 2015 nuclear deal are not supplied, we will keep reducing our obligations. But many Iranians are struggling to make ends meet and are running out of patience. We still don't know what's going to happen. The economic situation is changing every day. Sanctions and our lives are getting worse. This is all because these two governments are escalating tensions. Their kids will all be fine. It's the people and the middle class who are under pressure. Just let us know if a war is going to happen. And if not, fix the situation. Hundreds of people took to the streets in January as protests against rising food prices morphed into rallies against the ruling elite. Hoping to placate the demonstrators, the government in February announced a 20% hike in salaries and $14 billion in food subsidies. But U.S. sanctions have dragged Iran's oil exports down from 15 million barrels per week to less than 4 million barrels per week. And with more restrictions on the way, the government's going to have even fewer resources to take on its rising economic challenges. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. Well, let's get more on this now with Nada Habibi, who joins us from Brandeis University in Massachusetts. He's a professor of the economics of the Middle East. Welcome back to Money Talks, Nada. Now, as we heard, President Donald Trump is now sanctioning the top Iranian leadership, the Supreme Leader and his office. What impact will that have on an already uh, struggling economy? Um, well, um, first of all, good evening. Um, I, I don't think this uh, new round of sanctions is going to have a direct impact because uh, this uh, does not mention any economic steps or restrictions on any economic flow of goods, imports of anything of that nature. But obviously it has further psychological impact on the economy, which has already uh, taken a severe beating because of the sanctions that have been imposed so far um, unilaterally by the United States. Yes, and the president has also signaled that he might even uh, impose sanctions on Iran's foreign minister. So he's really targeting uh, the leadership and its politicians, isn't he? So but what impact is that having more generally? Do you think that will get Tehran to the negotiating table? Um, I'm not sure because um, the foreign minister 
Mr. Zarif does not have any economic assets that would disrupt Iran's economy. However, if that means that he cannot travel outside the country, uh, that could have a, a negative impact on possibility of Iran negotiating with other countries, uh, pushing forward diplomatic initiatives. But as far as uh, direct impact on the economy, I really can't see how that would be significant. We have to keep in mind that in the past, for example, in addition to the oil sanctions, the U.S. announced the sanctions on Iranian steel exports. That was significant. More recently on petrochemicals, that was significant. And what can come in the future are additional economic sanctions, meaning that U.S. might identify new areas where Iran has been able to export products and target those. Now, as these sanctions from the U.S. keep on coming, is it really just ordinary Iranians who are feeling the pain from them? Um, both uh, ordinary consumers and uh, producers. Um, the inflation rate in Iran, the latest report shows it at around 38 percent year to year. That's quite significant. And the incomes have not kept up. Um, obviously, imports are very expensive, but the cost of many goods, even those that are produced domestically, even a variety of food items uh, have increased. Uh, and the pressure on consumers is quite visible. Impact on production and, on em and employment is also significant. Uh, these are uh, causing a lot of economic pain, but uh, I don't think these are going to lead to any significant um, political or social unrest at the moment, given the domestic environment mm. of the country. OK, we'll see what happens as these measures take effect. Nader Habibi, thank you again for your analysis.